Welcome back to Better Preparedness. You may remember the episode I did recently, and I'll put a link to it, on unboxing a Mayday Emergency Survival Earthquake four-person kit. Now, I'm going to tell you why I think these emergency kits are a good investment and a great starting point for your preparedness. Let's jump in. The emergency management community, the prepper community, the preparedness community, everyone's got their opinions about these kits, about uh, buying a first aid kit commercially or an emergency kit commercially. And some will argue the quality is not there, um, you know, it doesn't exactly meet your needs and so on. But I think they're a great starting point and I think they're helpful to get the ball rolling towards what your needs are and get you thinking about what your needs are. Now, no kit does it all. Not one kit will do it all and be there exactly when you need it, where you need it, and how you'll need it. We can totally agree on that part. In the unboxing video I did, I'll put a link to it up there. I think it's up there. I'll put a link to it up there about exactly what was in this kit. It's a pretty solid kit. It's got a lot of stuff in it. And I think it's useful for you to understand the types of things you get in a commercial kit. Although make sure whenever you're buying a kit, look at the content list. Ask yourself, is this what applies to me, to my family, to my in local environment, your climate, and so on. So you can do research. So for example, the government of Canada has some fantastic packing lists. The US government and a lot of European countries have some great packing lists and suggestion lists of what you should have in your emergency kit. So take a look at them and you know compare what's in your kit. Food. Well, especially this kit, but I don't think any commercial kit has really yummy food, so to say. You know, this is a 2,400 calorie lost at sea kind of ration. If you were to nibble away at this, uh, it'll probably help keep you going. It'll keep your spirits going. But realistically, if this is a multi-day crisis, hopefully you have some better food in your kit. So make sure, you know, keep it, I guess, in your kit, but make sure you improve it and then rotate those food stocks. Like you can have granola bars and so on. Keep in mind that if there's anything you need to cook, you'll need the means to cook it. And so if this kit is for the first moments or whatever of the disaster or the first hours, you probably don't want to get, get into cooking. Water. Well, this kit has four of these pouches, six mini pouches of water. This pouch could be reused as and refilled. It's kind of got a Ziploc type thing and a spout. Useful, helpful to keep your spirits up for the first day, but really you need a lot more water than this. And three to four liters or a gallon of water at least per person per day is kind of the norm. So yeah, if this helps keep you going until the rescuers find you in the first six to 12 hours, great. If it starts to go in 24, 48 hours, 72 hours, you know, water is one of the key things to survival and keeping you going. So always have more water. You can add more water into these kits, for example. First aid kits, I'm gonna put a link in the description below on my article on how to design your ideal first aid kits. There's no one first aid kit that will do everything and be wherever, exactly where you need it at any time. So make sure you have a first aid kit that is useful. This comes with a very primitive first aid kit. Um, for some limited wounds, it has some sterilizing pads, it has a little bit of teeny bits of medication and so on. These also expire, so keep that in mind, but I think you can probably do better. Keep in mind that you may be accessing this kit and needing this kit as the crisis is happening. Say there's a house fire and you need the crowbar that's inside it. You need the sort of rescue tool type thing where shut off, you know, water shut off valve. So you might be needing it right away in the actual crisis. You may also be having to flee your home and flee, fleeing being at a moment's notice or sort of prolonged, maybe there's an impending crisis happening. But you may also need to stay in your home for long term. The toilet element, the toilet element with this, which has, you know, there's a toilet seat that goes on the bucket, there are bags and there's chemical. I think it's a great thing. It helps keep your spirits up if you have a toilet to use and if your family has a toilet to use. It's far more pleasant than randomly somewhere or outside. Then this can help you feel more comfortable about staying home for a period of time in a crisis. Items expire. Well, think of this as being an insurance policy that expires and you didn't use your car insurance policy. 
Well, it doesn't mean it was bad to have it. I think the fact that the water, the food, and the first aid kit in these kits do have a shelf life, you know, about five or so years, but keep that in mind. And it's not a problem if you have to rotate or, or get, get a few new items because they expire. What you're left with, in my opinion, is a useful stock. There's a wind-up emergency light and radio. There are emergency whistle with some survival stuff in there. Some mylar blankets, some dust masks, some work gloves. They're all useful elements that don't really expire. So what you're left with is a useful kit. Make sure you plan with your family how you'll use this kit, when you'll use it, and who should access it. And also make sure everyone knows where it is. If this is in the master bedroom, which is, I think, a good place to have it, and if you're a high, high danger zone for earthquakes, well, maybe pretty close to your bed, because if things collapse around you, you may need something that's very close. And if it's three or four or five meters away in a closet, do you absolutely have access to that closet? So keep that in mind. Now, I've given you a whole bunch of reasons why you should improve it why some of the items are not the absolute top-notch quality for long-term repeat use. Well, so why should you buy one? I guess the, what it comes down to is this is getting you rolling on this topic. You're doing your research, you're putting your thought into it, you're involving your household. And I think that you can get a good start with one of these kits. Do keep in mind, improve it, update it, and make sure it's tailored to what your needs are and your risks are. Thanks a lot for watching Better Preparedness. I'm going to put a few other videos up here, up here, and click that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.